Uh, good morning. It's 10 o'clock, uh, September 22nd. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Hanson Board of Health. Uh, roll call. Arlene? Here. Kevin? Here. And myself, Dennis O'Connell, present. Um, first order of business will uh, approve the minutes from previous meetings. If everyone got a chance to look them over. I did. Teresa, do you need the date for the minutes or just all minutes? Um, I've never actually done it this way. I would think um, just list them. Whoever yeah. makes the most and just list them and then approve them all at once. Please. Has everyone had a chance to read them? Oh. I did, and I um, I can't bring them up now this morning. I'm having internet issues, so I know they go back to July. I, I can make a motion. I got a list of the dates here. Okay. I'll make a motion to uh, accept the minutes of meeting March 10th, 2020, May 12th, 2020, June, oh, I'm sorry. Let's start over. March 10th, 2020, April 7th, 2020, April 23rd, 2020, May 12th, 2020, May 18th, 2020, June 2nd, 2020, June 9th, 2020, July 7th, 2020, July 21st, 2020, August 11th, 2020, and September 15th, 2020. And that, that'll do it. Do I hear a second? Uh, second. second. We'll go to roll call, Aline? Yep, yes. Yeah. Kevin? Yes. And I'm a yes also. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, new business. Uh, we need to take a vote on Article 11 concerning the compact to purchase for the transfer station. Yeah. Do Has I hear? Has everyone seen the article? I have. I'll read the article back now. I'll read the article if you want. Okay. I just wondered if everybody had a chance to see it. Pardon? I asked if everyone had a chance to see it. That was my question. I emailed I emailed the um, warrant to everybody last week. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do I have any questions on it? Or? Nope. Okay. And I'd entertain a motion to uh, – what? Approved the uh, what selectman's request for a compact to purchase? No, oh, you know what? I will make a motion that we um, support Article 11 for compactors for the transfer station placed on the special town meeting warrant. Thank you. I'll second that motion. This is Kevin. Thank you. And we'll go to roll call. Ali? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And I'm a yes also. Um, next order of business would be septic plans. Uh, no, there's no septic plans. No, it was just those two things I believe that we needed, right? Um, no, and then the um, open meeting law complaint that came in yesterday that I sent you guys yesterday. Oh, so did we need to... Discuss it because what yes, it needs to be acted on within 14 business days. Okay, so does that mean we need to send something in writing? Do we need to explain that we just accepted all the minutes and that they will then be posted? Um, sort of. Yes. Well, there were three things. One was that um, the agendas are not posted online, which they are not required to be posted online. They're required to be posted at the central location where all the other art, um, minutes, uh, agendas, sorry, are posted, and that is outside the building. So and we in the past... That's uh, not a violation. 
No, no. But had we in the past posted the um, sometimes I do. I haven't posted in a long time because I it's I've been so busy. If I have time, I do. Is it required? No. No, I I know that it's not required. But I, my thing is, was it past practice that the agenda was? Because now people can't get in the building, and they, I can understand. You don't need to get into the building. It's outside the building. But you still have to come to the building. You have to go to town hall to see it. This is true. You yes. know what I mean? Yep. Instead of just being able to look at it online. Yep. So I can see that even though it is not required, it makes it more transparent if people have the ability to go online and say, oh, this is what's coming up. I want to listen to that meeting. Yep, the if I have time, that, I do. I if I don't have time, I don't. Okay, well, and I guess we have to figure out what's in the public's best interest to um, make sure that that's done in advance so people don't feel like this thing's happening that they're not aware of, because the only way now is for them to listen to the meeting if the meeting is aired, but our meetings are not aired, so... There really isn't a way for the public. What do you mean our meetings aren't aired? They're not. They're not going out live. They're taped. No, they have to go out live. That's part of the problem. I don't think that they have. Well, to that's go out part live. of the complaint. But that's not. That's nowhere does it say they have to go out live. I'm not sure why. The only meetings that that we do live, unless. It's actually, that would be, you'd have to ask Ryan about that because I don't think that that's possible. Um, the only meetings that we've done in the past through Whitman Hanson Community Access that go out live, that's required by contract, is the selectmen's meeting. None of the other town meetings that are held, any board, any commission, goes out live. They're taped and then shown. So I think our meetings would That's be not what I've meeting. heard from Eric. Eric told me that they're live, and then there are two exceptions that the meetings weren't live, and that's part of this complaint. Could we, as far as, far as responding to this complaint, is this something that a response could be that we're getting an opinion from town council on, on this matter? We don't need to get an opinion on town council, though. I, I guess I would have to, I would be very surprised if Eric told you that these meetings during the day or any of the meetings every night would go out live because sometimes there's three or four or five meetings at the same time. They can't all but go out live. Aren't, aren't, we ta aren't we talking about law and also COVID regulations yeah. that are currently in place? I mean, that's something that I would think I'd want an attorney to review, not to have someone from Cable Access's opinion on. But, I can't hear. But so... What is the question? Because my, my the question I'm talking about right now is that the complainant thinks that our meetings should be live. And I don't know where that has anything to do with COVID. We're talking about airing them live. So I'm not sure how that, how but the, the guidance from the state that's come down on open meeting law and holding meetings has changed due to COVID and they've given more leniency and they've, I think that we should get an opinion on what's come out from the state on that as to if we've actually created a violation or not. But I don't see the state telling you that you have to air live meetings as part of COVID. So yeah. I spoke to the town clerk. The town clerk said if the meeting is not live, the meeting needs to be canceled. However, if you look on the, um, the executive order from the governor, which I yep. emailed a section of it to you guys right before the meeting started. Yep. Right. Um, hold on, I, I gotta pull it. it up. I'm reading it right now. It, it says, it says may it. a public body post a recording or transcript of a meeting afterwards instead of providing access to a meeting as it is occurring. The executive order provides that a municipal public body that for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts is unable to provide alternative means of public access that will enable the public to follow the proceedings in real time may instead post a full and complete transcript recording or other comprehensive re record of its web on its website as soon as practicable practicable after the meeting. Okay, um, but that doesn't have to do with cable. That means when you when you post a Zoom meeting, 
you have to make that information available to people so they can listen in. That doesn't mean it has to go live on cable. There's a difference. But that was the that was the method that we were using. Okay, so it sounds like you have to make the Zoom information available. It's people. right on the agenda. What is it? It what's at the top of the agenda it says the pub oh I don't have the agenda. I'm not looking at the agenda, so I don't. So on the, it's at, on the top of every agenda. It says that the meeting is posted live on yeah. cable access. Right, and then there's okay. a link. There's a but link to the to the uh, cable. I don't think that that's correct. I really don't think that that's correct. Um, I could see if you posted the information for people to join the Zoom meeting, okay. and then they would. You did okay, during listen, the okay, why don't we, why don't you entertain this? Instead of that banner on the agenda, could we post the go-to number in a link instead of that cable link? We were asked not to do that because of people calling in and they were, there were a couple of pornographic things on. Oh, meetings, I see. Okay. Which is yeah, why yeah, we the, stopped the, doing Yeah, the that. meetings were getting hacked in other towns and I think it right. happened before. Meeting we did that the first couple of meetings, and then the selectmen meeting, a couple of things happened, so they said don't do that anymore because you got pe crazy people calling in. Right. I would okay. talk to Ryan because I think there's a way for them to mute people, but I don't think that it has to be live through cable. Um, I've never heard that before. So It doesn't have to be through cable. It just needs to be live. And the only way we can do that is through cable. But that's, that's still, I, I don't see how the state can mandate that. I really don't. Um, I think, and I, so the, the real question is we have to address this complaint. That's, yeah, that's what we right. have to do. So right. as far as right. addressing the complaint, how do we want to handle that? Do we want, I mean, my personal opinion, I think that we should address the complaint by we're getting an opinion on co town council on it as to the complaint because I don't feel comfortable answering a complaint where I don't really know the answer. That's just me. And also, also, I'm not comfortable because we have conflicting um, answers between the executive order and the town council. The exec executive order says we're in compliance and the town council says we're not. Well, right. town clerk says we're not. The town clerk, excuse me. Yeah. But the executive order says we are. It says what we're doing is permissible. Right. So we need a clarification so, on that. Yep. And I and I have questions, but you guys can't answer them. So I would have to check with Eric because to ask about uh, the meeting. Because I don't know if the meetings can be streamed, but that's a question I have to talk to Eric about. Um, what was the other part of the complaint? It was the agendas, the minutes not being posted, which now they will be, and then the meetings okay. not being live on um, August 11th and September 15th. When he said live, did he say live on cable, live on the internet, or just live? The meeting. 8, 11, and 9, 15 have not been broadcast in real time. The web page is not up to date. The Board of Health member, Arlene Diaz, is the chair of cable committee just for the information. This is the second time these meetings have been scheduled, so the Board of Health is off the air in real time. I have to submit this complaint and let the public body have access to the public health in real time. The Board of Selectmen have been notified by town complaint form and certified mail. The scheduled meetings keep conflicting. Yes, I would say it is intentional. No, that was only one time. It wasn't that something happened and we had an emergency meeting and August 11th, um, I remember September that. 15th. Both of them, I believe, is because the selectmen um, were meeting at 5 o'clock or something, so they couldn't host our meeting live. And I think the same thing happened on September 15th because there was a joint meeting with the um, Whitman and Hanson Board of Selectmen with the school committee. But wasn't one of the meetings we had an emergency meeting or a last minute meeting and we couldn't No, those do it were all broadcast live. 
It's the only two meetings that weren't broadcast live were August 11th and September 15th. August 11th was because something came up like a couple of hours before the meeting so that they couldn't broadcast it live. August 11th, and what was the other, September 15th? September 15th, which was just last week, and that was the joint meeting with the Whitman and Hanson Board of Selectmen and the school committee. Right. but our We never know when they're going to meet. Our meetings are set up a year in advance. Right. Oh, yeah, I know that. But people listening to this may not know that. How about if we... Okay. Could, so could, we I, put, could we put, like, a notation on the agenda stating that any citizen that would like to listen in on the meeting could call the office and get the go-to number? Yeah. I don't know. Would, you know would, I, that, I, would that cover our, you know, would that cover know. our obligation? I, that I don't know. I'd have to check. But, you know, that that's a way to filter out all the undesirables and and yet and still meeting, offer it to, to people that want to listen in, you know? I would think Ryan would have... I mean, are we, are, we at a, are we at a point where we can start holding meetings? Real meetings again? Um, some um, people real meetings. Um, I originally when people started having meetings, John said no meetings before seven o'clock at night. So I would have to check to see if that has been changed. And the only place you can meet is the board of selectmen's meeting room or the middle school. And the middle school is not a good location. Well, it's it's that's if you're going to have a lot of people. We wouldn't probably have that issue. We could probably use the selectmen's meeting room. But in terms of cable being able to cover it, it's not a good location. It, it, so, that wouldn't, it, it, cable wouldn't have to cover it if it's a live right, meeting. Right, if we held a public meeting, right. I'm just wondering oh, if, if maybe we okay. can get back yeah, yeah, to yeah. that where we don't have, where we don't have a huge, you know, attendance number typically to the meetings that I'm wondering if maybe we can try to get back to that just to solve this issue. Yeah. I'm sure we probably could. It's just, I just need to check on if we can have a meeting at four. I don't know why John would have an right. issue with it, though. Because I think in the selectmen's meeting room, I think we could probably end up with, I would think, eight people in there, right? Somewhere around there? Um, I forget what the limit is. I want to say it's 10, but, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, you know, there's only five of us. So if we had five people in the, you know, we could have I, I people think waiting in the hallway or too. stand outside and get them, right. you know, if they needed to have access to the meeting. For, you I know, think the remote meetings are working working out great way better than i thought they would i think they're working out great and i think they're productive you know yeah I do. yeah so is the plan to check with town council on the regulation what do you think dennis um you'd have to but i i'd bring up the executive order to them right you know and say hey you know you need to get get it straight with the state house um you can't be okay Issuing, you know, uh, he he can't have two sets of rules. It's... Well, that was from. And that do we was need from the, to make the executive um, the clerk, order not... up here? I can't hear. Go ahead, Arlene. I was going to say, do we need to make the executive order uh, the person who filed the complaint? Do we need to make them aware of the executive order? That was my question. Um, uh, are we supposed to uh, answer that let his complaint letter? We have, we to, have to. That's 14 days. Hold on. Okay. Well, um, the chair must disseminate the complaint to the members of the public body. The public body must meet to review the complaint within 14 business days. After review, but within 14 business days, the public body must respond to the complaint in writing and must send the complainant a response and a description of any action the public body has taken to address the allegations in the complaint. At the same time, the body must send the attorney general a copy of the complaint and a copy of the response. Okay. Um, and it says, but, if the public body requires more time to renew, review the complaint and respond, it may request an extension of time for good cause by contacting the Division of Open Government. I don't think we need an extension. Okay. No, I, I agree. I think that would just be prolonging getting an answer. I think we should just, uh, I, I personally don't feel like we've, we've, we've violated Well, Well, we approved the minutes. The minutes are done. Um, so you you, know, you want to check with town council? You want us to check oh, with town council? Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. 
because okay. that's conflicting with the executive order, you know. Right. If we if we can just go by the executive order, that would be part of the answer to the complaint. Okay. Yeah, I think we should get town council to just review the ex executive order and just make sure we're in compliance, just so yeah. um, just so you know we can base our decision off of feedback from town council on it, rather than you know I'm not a lawyer, I I don't just don't feel comfortable making a decision to respond to that complaint without um, someone that's at least going to read it and give me their their input on it. Well, yeah, especially since he's telling us that if it's not live, it's not a meeting. <laughs> right. Um, so it, once we check with town council, then um, what do you want to happen? Uh, if the... Without a response, that, or do you guys want to meet again, or what do you want to do? No, if, if the executive order is in compliance, I believe you can draw up a response, can't you? Yeah, sure. Because, sure. you know, you'll have everything you need. As okay. long as the executive order is legit. Okay. Well. Everyone else feel the same? When is the 14 day deadline? What's the date? Um, we got it yesterday. So let's see. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Um, October 8th. Is this the second complaint? This is a um, an open open uh, meeting law complaint. Was this the one that went to the town oh. administrator and then came to us? Or it's, it's, it's essentially the same thing, but this is an uh, an official open meeting law complaint. Oh, okay, all right. Yep, okay. I couldn't figure out the 14 days because I thought we were past that with yeah, the no, original no, no, no. complaint. No, we just okay. got this yesterday. Okay, did that come from the state? No, it came from the compl complainant. Oh, okay. All right. I, did you not so, get it? I sent it to you. Wait, yeah. Did you send it to me today? No, I sent it yesterday, right when I got it. I have had weird stuff with my internet today, so I can't, I get things, but I can't open them. I sent so, it yesterday morning. I don't. But you, everybody else got it, right? Because it yeah. was all in the same email. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'd say check with the town clerk or the town council. Town make sure council. the executive order is, is legit. And if it is, you can draw up a response. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Thank and you. Was that the only part of the complaint, the, the minutes, and then the... Um, the agenda, the, the minutes, and the two meetings. I'm going to have to look at those meetings because those meetings must have, I, I don't understand why they wouldn't have followed the same pattern that we've done where we've had them. It was, it was something happened all, on 8-11. It was supposed to be live, but something happened and Eric sent me an email like three hours before the meeting saying they couldn't host it live. And I forget what, the, why they couldn't, but something oh, happened that they couldn't. It was. It was going to run into um, a board of selectmen meeting. Because Something like that, yeah. And 915 was um, because there was a joint meeting. So that they that's actually part of his complaint is that the scheduling is too close to the selectmen also. But ours is always at 4 o'clock. I never, I don't know when the, set, the selectmen schedule their meetings. I never I know. know when they're meeting. Our yeah. meetings are set a year in advance. I know. Yeah. But... but Anyhow, um, yeah, we'll, we'll do what you said, you know, draw up your uh, response and we'll look it over after you draw it up. Okay. Okay. So does that, are we going to vote on this now so we don't have to come back and vote on it later? In terms yes, of that's the, I, yeah, do a vote that that's how you want the response. Yeah. So, so I entertain a motion. Um, Hmm, how, do, how do I phrase this? It's in a motion nope. to answer the complainant's um, accusations in but a report. Dennis, Was Dennis, that? Yeah. I'm going to make a motion okay. that we will review um, and answer the open meeting complaint that we got. That sounds a lot better. Do I hear a second? Yes, I'll second that. This is Kevin. 
And we'll do a roll call. Ali? Yes. Kevin? Yes. And I'm a yes also. Uh, is there anything else to bring up? Any questions? Any answers? Oh, yes. Gil has something. Hold on. Yes, uh, Dennis, I don't know uh, where we stand as far as Boss Dance Studio. Uh, I reviewed the document we went over yesterday there and made contact with her to meet her sometime today. But there's quite a bit of stuff that she still she has to do. And according to this attestation form, I have to go over them with her, uh, especially the Corey, the story stuff. I spoke to our chief. He doesn't do that for these. Uh, she has to go through death or something. So uh, suppose she does have that done. And looking this over, I am the approving authority on this. It doesn't specify, but you know, I have to go over this with her. There's like, uh, what's this? Probably 15 different items on this. And then I have to sign it. And um, then it goes to the Department of Early Education. So uh, like I say, I don't know how many people are aware of this. I know it's been a bone of contention throughout the town hall here. It just has to be done and done soon. So. But like I said, I'm going to meet with her this afternoon. Uh, she's available after 11 to call to make a time to do this. But you know, it's going to take a while. I mean, uh, I believe we have to get copies of the course and stories, it looks like. But I mean, once I meet her and go over what she has submitted, I have most of the forms she has submitted to EEC. And uh, I guess we'll figure it out this afternoon where she stands. OK. Um, and have we looked into um the why setting up at Kiwani, Gil? Yes, uh, we did meet. Uh, they're going to uh, go to EEC. Uh, well, they're already licensed approve. through EEC. Yeah, they're already licensed, but EEC starts to you know, review it. And we had a department head meeting today as far as uh, Wi-Fi and everything. And right. there's going to be boosters put in as far as Wi-Fi, but we are progressing with that. Hopefully, it's going to work out good for the town if we can get it approved. So. Awesome. Awesome. As you are aware, there's no... There's no longer a camp director there. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mr. Boyle's gone. Yeah. Uh, He's on leave, so. Yeah. But we'll so, work with John Stanbrook, uh, you know, the town administrator, and trying to get this put together with Dory and uh, Teresa, because it's a joint effort. Because you know, it's a lot of permitting. They so they have to be certified. Teresa has to get all the information. Which, She's familiar with any house, so uh, she'll be working on it and try to hopefully this will get you know put together and it will work out for the town. Awesome. Well, if you you know any questions, I'm available. You know that, so. Yeah, I think we're gonna end up uh, probably end up calling this afternoon once I meet with her and we go over what she's got and what she doesn't have. So. Okay. I'm very concerned of this, so. Yeah. Um, anything else? And. I think we're, you know, it's just business as usual here. I think you know, we got a couple of separate systems starting out, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, uh, our Dakota partners, like Kevin, I mentioned this to you. Uh, you know, they don't have uh, SLT doesn't have their license yet, and they're talking about using a contractor that they're familiar with his license to set that tank. Which, I mean, I have no problem with that myself. I mean, SLT owns MBO who manufactures the tank, and they're more than well experienced. And the tank is so huge. I mean, so uh, I believe it's so keto one. So I'd have no problem with that. If you guys, you know. That, that, that's, that's kind of circles back to what we had talked about with the licensing regulations and how they don't work. You have, a, you have a big company like SLT, which they're fully capable of installing a septic system, I would say. And by our regulations that we have on the licensing, that they can't get a license if they don't have, you know, X amount in another town. You know? Right. Yeah, we'll have to review that at some point. So like I said, I mean I don't have I don't have a problem with, you know, pulling the light pulling the license just to set the tank and then he's the the silver also. And that way they have lots of tanks in the ground they can have foundation. Now what do you, what are you thinking? That they're just gonna get a permit just for the tank and then another permit to do the system when they do it? Oh, yeah. Um That'd be the same permit. Right. I mean, so, they, I mean, you, know, you can get joint, uh, you know, contractors on a permit. 
Right. And, 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 and that's the, that's the whole thing is that they're just doing a workaround to get the permit anyway. So our regulation is really just kind of silly. If you ask me, you know, you just get someone else to get the license, uh, the, the permit for you that has a license yeah, and the license a- really doesn't make anyone more qualified. If you pass the test and you get it, you qualify to get it. But just like any other trade, you, you know, you got to know who you're hiring. There's good contractors and there's bad, and that's up to really the consumer. Well, the thing is, I like to get it moved because, you know, they gave, I think it was $80,000 building permit and another $67,000 water development fee. So, you know, they've already given the town a bundle of money so fast. So. Yeah, I mean, if they have, you know, if whoever's putting their name on the permit and they have a license, then. Yeah, I mean, issue it, right? Yeah, and then split it. I mean, they can split the permit. I, you know, I see no problem in that. SLT gets their license, and they, you know, start the SIPTA system. It's all legit. Kevin, you can open up an electric company and not even have a license. All you have to do is hire someone with a master's, right? <laughs> That's it. That's it. You can, you can just hire for the master's license and assign it to your company that's what all these solar companies are. Yep. all these solar companies just get so you could have someone that's retired still has a valid license and uh they, ex- they can do that exactly they can have it assigned to their corporation and then they can run a full-blown electrical company yep i know i know never worked a day in the trade and they can do it that's i mean it's just some of the regulations is you know you can just do a workaround and it's you know but i think i, I think our, our licensing regulation it's kind of it, it, it seems like it's putting more of the the normal everyday people that are out working and doing the work that shouldn't be handicapped by a regulation that they are. It's kind of shorthanded them. You got a guy that could be doing this for 20 years, wants to go out on his own. Where does he start? He can't get a license. He doesn't have any, you know, but he fully knows what he's doing. And then a situation like this, you got a big company like SLT who say they could do 100% of their work, say, down in Plymouth. They only got one license that they can't get one in Hanson because they only have one license. It's just... I think we really need to revisit it and just um, do something about it. Yes, I agree. Do you want me to add that to the October agenda? Yes, please. All righty then. Any other topics or points of interest? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, wait, Kevin Gil's Green. got one more thing. Oh, I'm sorry. So as we talked about Saturday there, uh, the incident on South Street, uh, I told you I did inform her of the gathering law and everything that she had to do. And, uh, you know, the masking and everything. She, she basically said she didn't know, which I think she did know. But uh, there was approximately 150 people there. The street was pretty jammed up with cars. And the police did come and... Uh, First, everybody told them to type a street like that, informed us she should try to rent the pack lot at the AA or and bus people to the, to the farm. And uh, I kind of agree that I still think she's going to try doing it again next weekend. Oh, yeah. Moment. So I think uh, <laughs> it'll probably happen next weekend. So we're on that. Is this the farm? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Chanel Homestead there. Yep. Yep. I know which one. I just, I didn't hear, I couldn't hear the beginning of what he said. But I assume that's who it was. Yeah, they had, a, they had a big gathering last week. So. Yeah, yeah. I think there were a lot of complaints. Yeah, the police showed up with a couple of cruises and stuff. So. Uh, yeah. Right. yeah. I, think I, I think we pretty much covered everything that happened over the weekend here. There was something else. But, uh, oh, the baseball game again. So that was oh, no, game. really? Yeah. But, you know, address that too again. So, all right. That's about it I have right now. Thank you, Gil. I motion that we adjourn. Oh, do I I'll hear a second? second. Uh, yep, yeah, I'll second that. This is Kevin. Roll call, Aileen? <laughs> yes. Kevin? Yes. Kevin, Kevin, yes. And I'm a yes also. Thank you, everybody. 1034. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.